Ganesh, welcome. Uh, right now, you're dealing with this sort of interesting supply chain challenge. You're still constrained uh, in some areas, uh, but you know, uh, overall, the backlog is big, and you're taking on a lot of inventory to deal with this. Sort of explain how these cross currents are playing out in the way that you're managing the business. Sure. Uh, thank you, and good morning. Um, you know, we had a very, very strong quarter by any metric uh, that we have posted out there. And what an interesting time. Uh, all of our internal indicators are extremely strong, even as we see the backdrop of some weakness that might be there in the macro. And uh, in that process, we are unable to meet demand. We don't see that uh, subsiding all the way into 2023 at some point in time at the earliest. And so we are building our factory capacity. We're producing more parts. We're shipping as fast as we can. We're trying to help customers to be able to bridge to where they need to do their builds. And so we're very happy with the state of the business, where it's at, the state of the strength of the economy for our customers and therefore for our demand. Well, when it comes to regions and industries, where are you seeing particular strength? And is there concern about the durability of that as we go out beyond the next quarter or two, uh, given the, the uncertainty in the global macro? That's a great question. So, you know, the, the, the weakness, so to speak, in relative terms, for us, if I look at the last quarter, was in Asia. And, and it really was because of the shutdowns uh, that took place. So it wasn't so much a demand issue. Uh, it was a hell of a, you know, much more about the, uh, uh, the supply side constraints. But Europe was strong, the Americas were strong. When I look at the end markets, uh, you know, all of the end markets that are the predominant markets for us were extremely strong. And so we're dominated by industrial, aerospace and defense, uh, automotive, um, uh, inf infrastructure for communications, uh, data center infrastructure. A very small piece of our business is in consumer, and they're mostly consumer appliances. And uh, you know, in, we don't have any consumer PC exposure, we don't have any mobile phone exposure of any consequence. And so less than 10% of our business is in a consumer-ish type of space. But that's where there have been some weaknesses. Ganesh, I'm, I'm interested in your uh, balance sheet strategy. You, you, you do take pains to point out the degree to which you brought down debt and how it re remains a priority going forward in the next couple of quarters. Can you talk about it and explain why? Sure. So four years ago, when we had completed the last major acquisition, uh, our leverage ratio was, how, was at five. And, uh, you know, it's, it's at a high level. We were very confident with our cash generation capabilities, but there were concerns in the market. In the next... Uh, four years, we have brought that down. We're at 2.05 at this point in time for exiting the, the month of June. And it continues to come down steadily because of the cash generation capabilities. And about nine months ago, we began to add more components of capital return to our shareholders so that uh, the overall cash generation is balanced between what we're doing to bring debt down, what we're doing to have increased dividends, and what we're doing in terms of a programmatic share buyback um, that, we're, that we have been proceeding. We bought over a billion dollars worth of our stock in the last uh, nine months or so. Ganesh, let's talk about uh, supply and fabs in particular and re reflect on these two things, if you will, uh, the tensions that are arising in part because of Speaker Pelosi's visit to Taiwan and perhaps the, the impact, if any, on the supply chain and then the CHIPS Act funding passage and what that, um, what that might bring to the industry and U.S. supply overall. Sure. You know, with respect to the, the geopolitical tensions between Taiwan and uh, China, um, you know, we are observers from this and uh, we, we work very closely with uh, both customers and suppliers in both countries. Uh, TSMC, UMC are very important suppliers to us who are located in Taiwan. We have a great relationship with them. I don't believe any of the short term, um, you know, uh, saber rattling with respect to uh, Speaker Pelosi there is going to impact our business necessarily. Now, the passage of the Chips and Science Act uh, of 2022, uh, which happened uh, late last week and hopefully will get signed by the president this week, is very, very good for both the industry, but actually very good for America. And that's because it provides critical investments to even the global playing field for U.S. semiconductor companies. And through that process, it is strategically important for our economic as well as our national security as well. And we expect that uh, under the provisions of the bill, uh, the investment tax credit is a key part that uh, kicks in at the beginning of next year. Uh, that's an important part. And then we also have uh, the grants for expanding manufacturing, creating new manufacturing facilities 
uh, as well as R&D and uh, spending mm -hmm. on some future innovation that will all be important parts of how it helps the U.S. regain and in fact extend some of our competitiveness.